Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see The Naked City. I'm Bert Leonard, the producer. This story was not photographed in a studio. Quite the contrary. The actors played out their roles in the streets and the buildings of New York itself. These are the teletype machines of a New York City newspaper. You see them now resting between bulletins, lying in wait for the next man, woman, or child to be dredged up suddenly from the darkest moment of indignity or tragedy. For a city is anonymous, formed vaguely of the shadows and the shifting of its faceless people until one incident, one spark, can humanize it instantly and give each person a frightening sense of everyone else's presence. Tough case, eh, Lieutenant? It is that, Red. It is that indeed. Lemon drops. And now for the morning news. Hordes of the curious ring the scene of the crime this morning while the most intensive police investigation in New York's history continued around the clock. More than 200 new suspects were rounded up in the search for the man who kills with a coat hanger and always the same kind of victim. Young married women of great beauty except for one tragic flaw. Each has been crippled. We'll bring you further details on the 4 o'clock news. women had died violently here. It didn't matter that in the same time span, 50 other people had been killed on the highways and in the streets in all kinds of frightful accidents. These three deaths were a savage strike at the innocent. Now people studied each other in a new way. In the beauty shops, women avoided each other's eyes as they read and reread the story. And chin in hand, an analyst on East 81st Street gave absent ear to a woman muttering from the couch and thought about the murders. It wasn't enough to say that all of us are either thrilled or shocked by violence. There was something deeper than that. Something more native. A morbid fascination. A sharing of the universal guilt. Even a desire in some people to identify with the crime. You know, I'd like to have my hands on the guy who's been doing this. That's all. Just my hands, see? Nothing like a good murder to pick things up. What are you, a character or something? How'd you like it if this guy were to kill your wife? All I meant was... It just takes all kinds, that's all. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, boys. Okay, well, best to the wife. Thanks. What's this? Carrots, spinach, parsley, watercress, wheat germ, and the blessings of my doctor. Put them in the blender and this is what you get. Now, is there any reason why our child has to be born with nothing except muscles? <laughs> you know, maybe if he's too strong, he won't be too bright. So, um, where's his daddy's paper? I'll read it to him and give him an early education. Gee, gee I guess I forgot it. You never forgot your paper in your life.
You might try a different hiding place sometime. Oh, no. Oh, she's so young. Oh, well. I don't even want to think about it. This is no ordinary murder. And a murderer is no ordinary man, either. He's a man put together wrong inside. Man, somebody should have helped while he was still in the high chair. To save us the unpleasant duty of helping him into another kind of chair. Paramecia are of a genus of ciliate infusorians. Notice the elongated body rounded at the anterior end. And on the oral surface, you should be able to observe an oblique, funnel-shaped buccal groove with a mouth at the extremity. Well, that's it for today. Didn't you hear the bell, Jimmy? Yes, sir. Just waiting for the buffalo to pass. The dust to settle. I've been wanting to ask you something. Is everything all right, Jimmy? Why not? It's not usually possible for people between my age and yours to be honest with each other. But Jimmy, at the beginning of this semester, I marked three names, yours was one. Three students I felt had it, that special spark that saves teaching from becoming entirely a hopeless drudgery. But lately, something has been disturbing you, disturbing you badly. Now, it's none of my business. But if it's anything I can do, anything I can help with... Uh, no, I'm all right. I can't remember anyone in my whole life ever taking the time to, to look at me inside the way you just did. Dan, I think this is it. Mr. Halloran, you know I'm not taken by exaggerations. This is what? The coat hanger killer, Dan. And he'd be the 15th this week. Our Carol's got him in the squad room. All right, trot him in. We listen to his story along with all the others. Could I have some aspirin, please? Get him a couple of aspirin. Oh, four, please. Two isn't enough. Oh, geez, I get these terrible headaches. Should I sit down? Or should I just stand here? What should I do? What do you want to do, son? I don't know whether I can hold out much longer. I have this terrible headache. Any aspirin will help. Nothing will help. Nothing except telling you the truth. The truth being you're the unconscionable fiend who deprived three young wives of the right to live out their natural lives. Yes. Yes. And that's why you had yourself fixed up so you could tell us all about it. Yes. He was waiting for us at Morningside Park. Sounds like the real thing, Dan. All right, Sonny. Put on your considering cap and tell us how and why you did it. 
In the afternoon. I killed him in the afternoon, when the sun was out. You see, I live in this, this basement. I never know whether it's night or day. Well, if it wasn't for my watch and my radio. Of course, once you get outside, it's all right. Uh, shouldn't you have uh, someone taking notes? I mean, don't you take down a confession and warn a person that whatever he says will be held against them? And uh, where are the photographers? Don't they stay here? I asked you why you did it, if you did it. Of course I did it. I did it. Because killing is real, because it matters like nothing else matters. It makes a man a god, because a man can't really create, but he can destroy. And even more, it's a protest. It's a brilliant protest, the killing is. Against what? Against the world. Why is it so important to love and be loved? Why isn't it just as important to hate and be hated? Son, we're just policemen, not answer men. More than 800 suspects have been questioned in this case. We've given lie detector tests to 95 men and received 10,000 letters with false leads. We didn't believe their confessions any more than we believe yours, Sonny. What kind of an officer are you that you won't believe me? What do I have to do to prove it to you? Do I have to go out and bring in another victim and, and, and do it right here in front of you? Ask him a question. What was Ruth Jordan wearing when she was murdered? A chenille bathrobe. What color? Red. And, uh, and it was torn at the hem. Take him uptown where you found him and let him go. But she was wearing a bathrobe. I, I saw it. You didn't see it. You read it in the paper. That's what we gave out for publication to screen out the cranks and those like yourself who are looking for some desperate glory. Come on, kid. No, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go back. Please. I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what I might do. Even in death, the murdered girl had still not found peace from the curious. Pretty important, isn't he? Important? You mean unlucky? No, I don't mean him. I mean the one who did all this. Who brought all these people here. The murderer. What?
I just came in. Here, let me help you with that. Oh, thank you. This is the second tub I've had to put through today. I'll be glad when it's winter again. There's lots less wash in the winter. Oh, now, wasn't that a silly thing to say? I forgot. It won't be just Walt and me anymore. Oh, all those divers. See, Jimmy, a woman's work is never done. Yeah, you sure that's not too heavy for you? No, I don't mind. Set it down in the bedroom, Jimmy, if you will, please. Hello. Hello, darling. I'm fine. They did. They caught him. It's just those children and his wife. <laughs> Dinner? No. Jimmy, they caught the man who killed those women. Oh, it's been like a nightmare. You don't know. What's the matter? Well, thank you for helping me with the basket, Jimmy. What are you doing? Don't you see? He's a lot more important than we are, that man they caught. He's somebody. I don't understand. What this is all about? I'm nobody, because I was born nobody. And I'll never be anything unless I do this. Don't you understand? Jimmy. I have to do it. I have to be important. Listen, if you come one step closer to me, now I'm going to scream. I've got to be important! Jimmy, no! Jimmy, get away Jimmy! Jimmy, I've seen you around the building. Around the building, and you've always been so nice. My husband, my husband and I have always talked about how nice you are. You're not really like this, I swear you're not. You're good, Jimmy, I know. Jimmy, no! No! Why? Why? Don't you understand? I told you why! I have to be somebody! I th think you are somebody! He just tried to kill a woman up on Riverside Drive.
going toward Grant's tomb. somebody. It's always there, the evil that is the other face of goodness. In the city streets, in the car driving behind you, in the man you may never meet, in your friend, or your brother, or even in yourself. And just as surely, the other face of evil is goodness. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. <laughs> <laughs> 